Uh, no, no, I didn't. Um, frankly, uh, I was just happy to get out of where I was alive. Um, uh, that was really, <laughs> I was just happy to get out of there, and I just, you know, decided not to have a relationship with him anymore. Hello. Hello. Um, did your dad raise you like a terrorist? Like, was that his tension? Was that his what? Attention. Well, um, I was going to shooting ranges uh, from the time that I was six years old. Uh, he was exposing me to men like the Blind Sheikh, who were instrumental in raising funds and finding volunteers to fight uh, the people that were commonly referred to as infidels, for instance, the Russians. Um, it was his intention. It, I'm not sure how far his intention was. Um, at the time, as I said, there were many adults and their children who were going to Afghanistan to fight. Um, you know, he he tried to uh, instill in me ideals that uh, would be considered extremist. Um, I, in some ways, as strange as it may sound, the fact that he went to prison uh, when I was so young kind of sheltered me from a lot of the lessons that he was trying to teach me. Uh, it's also important for me to note that, you know, he wasn't an extremist the whole time that we were together. It wasn't until about a year before he went to prison that his ideas became uh, uh, so hardened. Uh, you know, I remember him in a lot of ways as a very loving father uh, who had a great sense of humor. Uh, and it wasn't until you know, close to when he went to prison that he actually became uh, such a fanatic. When was the last time you had contact with your father, like communication? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I stopped speaking with him when I was 12, uh, or actually no, 14. And uh, I didn't speak to him for a little over, uh, let's say about 10 years. And one day I get an email from the Bureau of Prisons saying that there's an inmate who'd like to begin communication with you. And I thought, well, who could this be? And sure enough, it turned out to be my father. And um, I had said I had 10 days to decide yes or no to the communication. And to be honest, although I had wanted to speak with my father for many years because I wanted to know uh, from him, you know, from him, the reasons that he chose the path that he did, it really took me uh, almost that whole 10 days to decide yes or no. And eventually, I decided yes and began email communication. He expressed support for the things that I was doing, trying to promote peace. Uh, but at the same time, it was very difficult for me uh, to figure out if what he was telling me was the truth or if it was just what he wanted, he thought I wanted to hear so that I'd stay in communication with him. Um, he'd been in prison for a long time. Uh, in fact, this was just the uh, 20th anniversary of the World Trade Center bombing um, not too long ago. You know, so it's, it's, our communication has been uh, not so great, to say the least. We actually aren't in communication anymore. I decided not to, um, just because I was dealing with so many of the emotions uh, that were brought up from all my childhood memories. And, um, and in some ways, I, I inferred some of the things that he was telling me to say that um, while in one instance he would express regret for what he'd done, uh, without explicitly saying that he'd done anything, um, and then at the same time would say that you know it was all God's plan and that he wasn't you know responsible for his own decisions. So I thought it would be best if uh, if I again uh, disconnected communication. Um, how did your um, how did your um, mom and siblings, if you had them, handle the situation? And if you did have siblings, were you like your dad's focus, or did he do the same thing? Well, the situation? What do you mean? Exactly? Like with like taking you to like shooting ranges and like exposing you as terrorism. Well, um, at the time, as I said, the Afghan war was going on, and it was um, the you're all too young to have ever watched Rambo 3, but um, in that movie, the Taliban are actually the good guys. Uh, because at the time, the United States was supporting this war between the Afghans and the Muslim people that were fighting it, and the communists. It was seen as um, you know, a great way to divert lots of economic and military attention away from this arms race that was going on. 
Um, so from, from the U.S.'s perspective and from the West's perspective, my mother's perspective, for instance, um, it seemed that this Afghan war was, um, you know, was okay by the U.S. government. So while she wasn't at all keen on the idea that any of her children were ever going to fight, she understood um, why my father wanted to go, although that was the source of many arguments that they had um, up until he went to prison because she was adamant about him not leaving. She was afraid she would want to raise her three kids by herself. Um, so you know, she, she wasn't happy about it, but she did understand that it, this war that was, uh, you know, was being supported by the United States, she actually found out um, about my father's involvement in the Kahan assassination the night it happened. Um, she was watching television and whatever show she had on was interrupted by breaking news and it said that Maya Kahan had been shot and so it is assailant and neither were expected to live and then there was the shot of my father lying in a pool of blood on the street and that was her introduction to this ideology that, um, that he'd been trying to foster. And so she went from one second being a woman who was happy to be a, you know, a housewife and raising three kids to being a single mom whose you know, uh, husband was all over the news and whose family was receiving death threats. Um, it, was, it was pretty crazy. I guess. Um, well, if you are you talking about specifically about a Muslim with that ideology, or just people? I, I have spoken, um, you know, frankly, I've been doing this for a few years, and the people that have made the most uh, noise about uh, or negative negative attention drawn on me has been the Tea Party. Um, they seem to be the least uh, accepting of um, you know of what I what it is that I'm talking about. Um, frankly. You know, Bucks County, for instance, doesn't have very large Muslim population. I, I do travel and speak, and I've spoken to many groups that had large, um, you know, that had a large number of Muslims in it. Um, but, uh, but really, uh, any opportunities that I've had to speak with people who differed from me were uh, either Tea Party members. I haven't actually had an opportunity to speak to, um, you know, for instance, going to a mosque. I haven't had that opportunity to go to a mosque and speak to a predominantly Muslim. Um, congregation, but I have you know spoken at synagogues where people didn't necessarily agree with some of the things that I was saying. Um, so there there have been opportunities for people to disagree to you know exchange thoughts and that sort of thing. Um, oh, I uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, so <laughs> you know, I'm curious was your dad like a terrorist his whole life, or like when did he start? Uh, well, he um. He, <laughs> He didn't actually, uh, I was saying earlier that up until about a year before he went to prison, um, you know, I remember him as being a very loving father um, who seemed only interested in, um, you know, raising his children to be good people. Um, it wasn't until uh, we actually, there were a few instances uh, or experiences that he had that, um, you know, and this is me speculating, that I believe made him um, very angry towards Western culture. Um, uh, he was electrocuted very badly um, about a year before he went to prison, um, and he was unable to work. He spent a long time at home. My mother, as she told me, uh, said that he became very withdrawn and depressed and would just sit in the corner and read passages from the Quran. Um, it didn't help that the group that he became involved in when we moved to Jersey City uh, was this group headed by the blind sheikh who, as I said, was instrumental, um, probably uh, more than anyone else at the time, in uh, raising funds, finding volunteers to fight in the war in Afghanistan. Um, the man was very charismatic, um, and uh, you know, he had an ability to make people do what he wanted. I'd like to say in some way that it was wrong place, wrong time, uh, but I, I don't think it was solely his interaction with those men that caused him to become uh, 
fanatical. Uh, but I think there were several several things that played a part in that. Uh, yes. Um, so you said that you had a friend who moved to Pakistan to fight um, with his family in the, the war in Afghanistan, and you said that it basically took away his childhood, which makes sense. But do you know uh, how it's affected his ideology now as an adult? Uh, actually, I haven't had contact with him in about 15 years or so. Um, you know, I, I, I really I couldn't speak on it. I, mean, I, I don't know. Oh, uh, she's walking slowly. Sorry. Uh, you said that you don't believe in violence at all, and you you also said that um, Muslim extremists say use violence to because they feel like they have to defend their religion against uh, the Western culture. Um, do you think violence is ever necessary to for a culture or a country um, to defend themselves against extremists? Well, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I don't believe that, you know, someday all of humanity will live in some utopia uh, where we all get along. I think that it's a battle of constantly trying to move forward. Um, I do believe that there are instances where, uh, you know, violence may have to be used as a last resort. Uh, I just think that the vast, vast majority of uh, instances where we use violence, uh, there is an alternative uh, that doesn't require it. Um, you know, that would really be the best way that I could answer it. I think that um, we, we spend so much time, well, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to say it. Um, you know, I just, I think that any time we plan on using violence, whether it's considered to be, you know, the last resort, or whether we're doing it, um, you know, because it's maybe easier than promoting, you know, some other ideology, that regardless of how good we feel about it, there are always going to be negative drawbacks to it. Whether it's, like I said, desensitizing our culture to violence, or you know, keeping those cycles of violence going. So even when we may think that um, you know it was our last resort and we're doing it for good, that it will still have many negative consequences.